The Honourable Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, is currently in the midst of a, some people think, a controversial candidacy for the post of Commonwealth Secretary General. She's here now uh, to update us on what's going on. Morning, ma'am. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. Morning. How are Thank you? Thank you for having me. I'm great. Thank you. <laughs> I just found out that for you to get this position, you will no longer be a minister, you will no longer be a senator. So why in the world you want to leave us, please? <laughs> Could you it is with mixed feelings, but it's about service and service in a different capacity. Service not only to Jamaica, but service to 54 countries across the Commonwealth with shared values and shared principles. And that really have and has a, a great potential to deliver even better impact in communities across the Commonwealth. So, so it's about service. Yeah, so before Simone, I understand what service means, but exactly your role would be what? What, what, what you do as a secretary? I would be... If I am chosen by heads of government, I would be the head of the secretariat, which is the main administrative body of the 54, uh, or rather of the entities that serve the 54 countries. There are essentially three pillars. There's a Commonwealth Secretariat, there's a Commonwealth of Learning, and there's, of course, the youth program. Uh, there are, you know, two G7 countries, five G20 countries, and the rest of us are at different stages of development uh, within the Commonwealth. And there are, um, you know, many, many uh, accredited organizations, civil society, volunteers that work in every imaginable sector that help with technical capacity building, that uh, support young people's empowerment, gender advancement, uh, so many things that are of critical uh, support in allowing us to achieve our development goals. Okay. So where would you be based? I would be based in London. Trust oh. me, this, this is the hardest part. The thought of leaving is the hardest part, but it would be for four years. I am offering myself to serve for the period 2022 to 2026, which would be the next substantive term of the Secretariat. Is it safe to say that your announcement caught people off guard? Yes, I think that's safe to say. <laughs> and, and, and why would that have been the case? I mean, you, you wouldn't have wanted anybody to know you were considering? Or? No, no. We had, we had been asked years ago when countries were first starting to say that they thought there should be a change of leadership. Okay. Uh, we, hadn't, uh, we had declined because our view was that hopefully the issues that brought those queries about would, um, would resolve themselves, but they haven't. And I think the fact that three candidates have come forward from different regions uh, clearly sets that out. There's a candidate from Tuvalu in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. There was a candidate from Kenya in Africa. And uh, there is, of course, He's withdrawn. myself. That person has... The, she, she has, has withdrawn. withdrawn. The Kenyan candidate yes. has withdrawn. Mm -hmm. But the Tuvalu uh, candidate, Sir Iateli, is, is still in the race, mm -hmm. very much so. So mm -hmm. it's a three-person three race. So you saw this and you said, I want it? Or did the <laughs> prime minister or someone else say, Kamin, I think this is... Well, well, we were, we were, Camille, we were asked Senator. again <laughs> no, when, uh, after the Kenyan candidate withdrew, the approaches started once more. And this time... Approaches we, from whom, ma'am? From, from a few other countries, a few other countries. And um, so we started consultations. We didn't consult before, but this time we consulted within the region and across the Commonwealth. And the response was so positive that it caused this sort of waterfall. We were getting questions at the High Commission and we said, you know what? We just have to take the decision and go. Uh, when the Kenyan candidate withdrew, their government actually issued um, a note to all the heads of state indicating that they were withdrawing at this time because they hoped another candidate would come forward and there would be time for that um, candidacy to manifest. So it wasn't um, perfect timing, but they said there's nobody better than Jamaican women in the sprint. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm alone to say, I, I say this now, but Poco. <laughs> Wait, well, hold on. But, so. but that, that, no. that was, in fact, a joke made to me by a counterpart foreign minister. But, so I have just now taken it as my you own, but it was, it was another foreign minister who, who made but it. But the posturing <laughs> has yeah. not been very different because although this is pegged as a three-person race, mm -hmm. it is clear, mm -hmm. um, I think, to many who are watching, or it would seem, let mm -hmm. me say that, that you are way ahead. And it seems that you too also feel that way. Well, it's going very well. I don't take anything for granted. I mean, it's 54 heads of state, 54 heads of government who make this decision. Um, so there could be shifting sands. But I will say unequivocally that the response to my candidacy has been so positive 
and so encouraging. I think that it is in part because of the experience that I have had across the, the political space in the multilateral space. I've served as president of the ACP Council, presiding over the, the securing of our mandate for the new development agreement through which we get our development funds. That is across Africa, Caribbean and the Pacific. I've served as chair of CARI Forum, opening the post-Brexit trade agreement discussions from 2017, I started those. We got the agreement in 2019. I've served as chair of the CARICOM Council of Foreign uh, Relations. I've served as chair of CARICOM Council on Trade and Economic Development. I mean, I have, we currently serve as coordinator within the WTO for the ACP, that is 79 countries again, many of whom are Commonwealth countries. So I have been operating at building bridges, you know, negotiating across the piece, so pulling you interest you're the together. best candidate? I think that many countries happily think so. <laughs> yeah. um, one country doesn't. Uh, I don't know if he's changed his mind, but uh, Prime Minister Gaston Brown from Antigua and Barbuda actually said uh, your move was a monumental error. Whilst I'm not asking you to think for him, do you know why he would say that? You know, I had a conversation with him about this. We had a great meeting when I was in Ghana for the Agri-Invest Forum just a few weeks ago. And uh, we, we, you know, I don't want to share our conversation. Right. fair enough. But how it has been taken in the media is not exactly how he meant it. He's actually very, com very complimentary of my, of my capacity and my abilities. And uh, I would say that maybe media can ask him for another comment at another time. Yeah. What about um, Baroness Patricia Scotland, who was urging you to even withdraw your candidacy? Well, I've preferred not to focus on, uh, on the incumbency as part of my campaign. I focus on my vision, uh, what Jamaica brings to the table through my person, what uh, we have done historically, what I have done, and what we wish to do for the Commonwealth, which is to enhance its ability to deliver on member states' priorities uh, to ensure there is more focused leadership, more strategic leadership that leverages the limited resources for the areas where the Commonwealth has comparative advantage, to strengthen our ability to deliver technical capacity and to get reinvestment mm -hmm. because funding has fallen off across the years uh, for various different reasons and it is felt largely that a new, re-energized, a new leader at the helm of the Secretariat bringing the energy and the bridge building capacity that Jamaica has to the space will however revitalize the yeah. Commonwealth. I don't know if it was done deliberately but Sim just interviewed someone from Rwanda. The decision oh, nice. will be made in Rwanda at it the end will. of this mm -hmm. month. Yes. If, if and when that happens, when do you pack up and you're going to leave us? We still have to discuss that. Okay. We still have and to discuss that what as happens, there isn't tough experience. Look ahead for four years. You come back and be the Prime Minister. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of question Did is that? Did you see that shriek? <laughs> well, no. I, wait, but I'm giving you a chance to answer. No, I thought I, it was a I, great I question. By the way, I thought it was a great question. Did you? <laughs> Did you really? Shocker. Shocker. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. I, I haven't uh, thought that far ahead. What I yeah. can say, though, is that uh, the next four years, if I am given up with the opportunity, will be focused on ensuring that the Commonwealth is fit for purpose, ready to deliver on the priorities of member states, that it is more relevant and more visible to the people of the Commonwealth and that Jamaica's leadership of that body will stand tall. And, and if someone, sorry, if someone just tuning in now would just say, she's a politician, what a, a politically correct answer. <laughs> no, but I mean, and certainly I over the next four it's... years. <laughs> I, I hope that means it's a good answer. It's a great answer. It's certainly a great over the next answer. four years, really there is. are op yeah. other opportunities that will open up as a result of, yeah. you know, yeah. the, the work you do in that space. I did wonder for true, like, where do you go after right. you, you know, you, you, you do? A... Hopefully I return here. Um, and, you know, for me, life is about service in different capacities. Come so on. it doesn't have to be in one way or another, and it doesn't have to be in government okay. either. So. Okay. I'm trying to remember what them said about don't ask a man, just ask a woman or something. Yes, some, some left yes if, you want, uh, if you want to talk about something, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. I think that's generally <laughs> yeah, what they no, say. No, that wasn't the thing. <laughs> but that one too. That no, one works as well. It's not there. It's a fact. It's I a fact. I hate to tell you this, Senator. No, no, no. But, no, but, no. but, but you know... <laughs>
there's space for all of us at the table, mm. always, yeah, men and women mm -hmm. bring different energies and different mm -hmm. capacities to the mm -hmm. table, always. Mm -hmm. This is why we promote diversity, it's why we promote mm -hmm. gender advancement. So Big vision, work? you seem very excited about yeah. it though. I so. am, yeah. I am. It's a, it's a huge opportunity for Jamaica to lead, um, to stand in the organization at that level. We have Jamaicans who have served it across the decades since independence at different levels and to lead it I think would be a great honor and it's also just a great opportunity to do more. Mm. Very proud of you Senator. Thank you so much. London is cold and grey you know yeah. you've got to bottle some sunshine <laughs> take it with you. And every single oh, week. You can send me some. Every <laughs> single week our diaspora check-in with the former <laughs> Senator and former <laughs> Minister <laughs> Lucy, Baroness. No but we know, no, we, know we, you we, will, we know you'll do well. Yeah. If and I'm, it, I'm positive it about happen. it I'm yeah. hopeful not counting any chickens again uh, so we continue to do work continue to engage. Cold them, man. You win. Count no. Them. Well, we, are, we are count them. So you said chicken for dinner chicken next. For <laughs> we are counting down to the garlic, but we are not counting chickens. Yeah, and will you be leaving to go or will they decide? No, I will leave. Okay. I would have gone to Kigali anyway. We <clears throat> would have had a delegation led by the Prime Minister okay. to Chagam in the same way in 2018. We went to London. That's where it was being hosted. The new chair in office, Rwanda, uh, will take the, the helm at that meeting. And uh, so there will be strong engagement and uh, a good delegation from Jamaica, as had been planned in any event. God bless you and your family, ma'am. Thank you very much. The Honourable Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith. Next time I call her name, I'll say huh? Secretary General of the <laughs> Commonwealth. And he's my friend. Can you believe that? That means I run the Commonwealth too. <laughs> It All doesn't right. work that way, though, no, you know. Please explain to him. It no, really I don't, doesn't. No, I don't want anybody explaining. On camera. I'm not even no. going to wait till we break. No, no, I, I don't. Know, sir, no, watch now. Oh, watch now. Father of our creation. Next month, when you see me, I'm going to sit down. So. And I'm saying, why I'm sitting down? So I say, because I'm the Secretary General and his friend. Yeah, friend. Would you guys allow me to say something, even though it's not... You didn't ask me the question. Please. Because it's something that bothered me when I woke up this morning. There's, I understand that people were asking questions about uh, the funding of the campaign. And I was a little surprised about that because it's something I had publicly answered previously in a radio interview a few weeks ago. That the campaign is a Jamaican campaign funded by the government of Jamaica. No other government has contributed any finances okay. to this uh, campaign. It okay. is Jamaican. Mm. And my travel is absorbed within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that has a budget for these things as I've been blending the campaign along with work that I would normally do as Minister of Foreign okay. Affairs and Foreign Trade. So we will report on the expenditure after the campaign because it's a little early in, in the stage to do so now. Uh, but there are no secrets. There's no attempt to hide anything. And, um, you know, I, I hope people will not yeah. seek to, to characterize it that yeah. way. And politicians mustn't be always politically correct. Just say, uno gue. It's smile Jamaica, but we have to it address all really topics. It doesn't really work that way. There are a lot of... <laughs> Please you explain to him, Simone. You know. <laughs> right. uh, I did that one off here. Yeah. No, okay. but hold on. Okay. But, the first but politician says, so nobody knows trouble again, you know. That's not true, though. We've had politicians who've said that. Can you imagine that headline? That, that the senator <laughs> said, oh no, wait. Not me. <laughs> Not me. All right, folks. Um,